Zuma, the prize that is the lead by two lengths. Special cargo under pressure, but starts to eat up the ground now. Inside the final furlong, a special cargo comes with a tremendous run. A special cargo comes through on the inside. A special cargo gets the most in time. battle between these two, Hypnosis forges ahead, but Insula now under pressure, and Insula starts to respond, and Insula responding game, the infielder finishing pass in third, but Insula goes up towards the line, it's going to be a double for the Queen, whether this, Insula, Insula wins in a post over second. with the white face Royal to do and Royal to do on the near side jockey with the white cap on the far side of the Argonaut and the Argonaut surges ahead this could be a treble for the Queen Mother the Argonaut going on from Royal to do in second place and the Argonaut gets there and treble for the Queen Mother the Argonaut wins it Royal to do. it's one of the real sports isn't it that's left to us I think a bit of danger and a bit of excitement and the horses which is the best thing in the world isn't it so I suppose one's always, I've always loved them, really, ever since I was a little girl. And trouble is one gets too fond of them sometimes. You know, you, you hate to see anything happening to them, which is, I suppose, everybody feels, really. The amount of time Queen Elizabeth spends on racing obviously must depend a great deal on her many other activities. She will always go racing when she's got a runner, if she can possibly get to a race course without chucking another engagement. She's extremely knowledgeable on form, runners, competence of jockeys, and she never, never consults anybody except her trainer on the technical side of whether a horse shall run. There has never been a time when she's had a runner when whatever the weather is like, she won't go and watch him being saddled in the paddock beforehand and go and welcome him afterwards. I'd always wanted to have a horse for steeple chasing. And of course, the Queen is very keen on the flat. So I thought I'd just uh, have a horse and see. And of course, I got hooked, absolutely. And had fun ever since. It was um, just after the war, really. It was Lord Mildmay, actually, who made me enthusiastic. Queen Elizabeth's interest in steeplechasing started at a Royal Ascot meeting in, I think, 1948 or 49, when both Lord Mildmay and Peter Caslett were staying as the guests of the then King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, who was then Queen, at Ascot. And in the course of that visit to Ascot, they enthused Queen Elizabeth um, to break away from the royal tradition, as it has been in recent years, of having only flat race interests, and to embark on her own in steeplechasing. Um, it was an Irish horse, Monovine, which sparked it all off. Shortly afterwards, the Queen Mother, fired with enthusiasm, bought Manicool, who followed Monovine's fine example with splendid successes in his own right. This led on to Devon Locke, who was a runner in the Grand National in 1956. About a quarter of a million people at Aintree. That proves the popularity of the National. This year, Her Majesty the Queen graced the occasion by her presence, accompanied by the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret. There's no draw for places in the National, and after temperamental runners have been got into line, the starter sends them away. It's a field of 29, and we travel with them on the gallop to the first jump. One of the most crucial in the whole race. Memorial Three and Demata are first over, but four come to grief. Their early mist, High Guard, the only grey, Must and Reverend Prince. 29 more fences to be jumped, most of about four and a half miles to be covered, and the camera still alongside the field. A new angle on the race, this. I was beginning to think, even on the first circuit, well, look, I'm going to win this race, because he was putting me so full of confidence. It was uh, 
a fantastic feeling because Devon Locke was really stretching himself and going into the air. And uh, then we, we, we went to the canal turn and uh, as most jockeys try to do, you sort of jump it on an angle so that you're getting a little bit of ground going around the turn. Into the country now for the start of the second round with the Morial still going beautifully. Jack Dowsville was still leading on our Morial, leading us in many dance. He was too, he was about 10 or 12 lengths in front. And uh, going out towards beaches on the second circuit, you could see our Morial coming back. I wasn't really worried about him because I, I knew I'd beat him in time. Delayed action gives a fine impression of how to take the slightly modified beaches. Mm. And Sundew makes his mistake. Sundew went with Fred Winter. And I was in the position I wanted to be. And I moved Devon Locke up to tackle Armorial. Now Devon Locke is after him. Yes, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother's well-fancied Devon Locke came into the picture at this stage and jumped the canal turn second with Eagle Lodge. This was, of course, a big thrill for everyone at Aintree. Was it going to be a royal victory? I didn't want to take the lead then, so Armorial and I jumped Valentine's together. But um, the fence after Valentine's, Armorial went over the 26th jump, and Amorial is down, Amorial is out of it. And the way is definitely clear for Devon Locke to take command from now on. Every stride which Devon Locke was taking, he was going further away from the opposition. I, I didn't have to look round, but I could feel it over my shoulders that they weren't anywhere near me. The incredible has happened, and only 50 yards from the post. The crowd is stunned as ESB goes on to win. An appalling moment for Devon Locke's jockey, Dick Francis. After I was changed and spoke to Peter Castles in the weigh-in room, he said, well, we'd better go up and see the royal family. And they asked me what had happened. And I, I didn't really know. But there couldn't be anyone more philosophical than, than the Queen Mother. And she said, well, that's racing. I'm convinced it was the noise because, uh, you know, it... it it, it, it was a fantastic noise. There were a quarter of a million people there that day, and I think 249,999 were cheering for the Queen Mother, the most popular owner ever. The tragedy of Devon Locke did not deter his owner, who in fact added to the number of horses she had in training at Fairlawn with Peter Caslett, whose table jockey at that time was David Mould. Fairlawn from... 17 was my home and my life. It was everything. Uh, I came in 57 and I worked here until the governor died in 73. The discipline was very hard, but everyone knew the score. No one was given any quarter, no one asked for it. We had uh, 15 altogether in the yard. The head lads, the traveling head lads, a gallop man and a yard man and a tack man. We never cleaned tack. The yard was ruled by the clock. You know, six o'clock when it struck, we had to be in the yard. And one o'clock, we were allowed out for lunch. And then we worked in the evenings from four till six. Six o'clock was feed time, then we could go back upstairs. In the early years, almost all the Queen Mother's winners were trained by Peter Caslett, whose splendid achievements were wonderfully maintained right up to the time of his tragic death in 1973. Mr Caslett was he's a good trainer, and he was very strict. Great discipline in the, in the, net, in the stables, you know. After Peter Caslett's death, the horses were moved to Lambourne in Berkshire, to the stables of Fook Warwin. Well, we, I knew Peter Cousett and Adney Marway um, were great friends. Adney was out riding when I was riding as an amateur. And Peter did before he started the train. And I stayed there a bit. And, um, but I never thought I was really in the running for training the Queen Mother's horses. We had to keep it quiet until we heard again, and we didn't hear again for about a fortnight. And um, 
patlamaya adı gönderiyoruz. I hope to keep it up to the same standard anyway. She's got some nice new horses, which she's bred, and I think they're promising. And will win races, and my one or two might be good. And uh, I'm sure she enjoys it all. And uh, we'll go on forever, I hope. It's exciting, <laughs> thrilling, seeing the legs are all right. One always loves to go and see the horses. You know, duck in. The lads are very good and get them very calm, and it's always a great experience. Now, here's your old boy. Here's your boy. Ashley House have made a mistake. Special cargo is rallying on the inside. They've got one to jump in the whip bread, and there's nothing to choose between plundering and let off. Very little to choose between the two. Plundering on the near side, let off on the far side. At the last, they took it together, landed together with Diamond Edge racing in between these horses again. It's plundering, let off. Diamond Edge rallying. Special cargo coming on the run, and Diamond Edge is coming through. Diamond Edge just coming through to shade let off. Special cargo finishing well. A three way further in the whip bread. What a fantastic finish. Diamond Edge, special cargo, and let off. These three in a photo and Kevin Moody thinks that he's won on special cargo giving a victory salute but it's a three way photo for the outcome of the Whitbread Gold Cup between number 10 special cargo there Kevin Moody shaking Bill Smith's hand you'd have to travel a million miles to see a better race let's review it again I honestly have never seen a finish as exciting as this Letock at this stage really looks like winning. And look over at the far side, two gallant sights from Fort Walwyn stable. Diamond Edge rallying as he did in 1981, and Special Cargo doing the same a little further over. Look at those royal colours. This amazing horse with his legs, which have had such awful things go wrong with them, now they're carrying him up the hill faster than any of his three rivals. Can he win for Queen Elizabeth? Diamond Edge has got in front now. But here comes Special Cargo. The post is just coming up. The angle's desperately difficult. You honestly wouldn't know. It's Diamond Edge, Letock and Special Cargo. They cross the line head to head. It looks to me a little bit as though Special Cargo's won. Yes, it was number 10. It was Special Cargo. So now this is the most important steeplechase Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, has ever won. It's her first victory in the Whitbread. It's Fort Walwyn's seventh. And there's Kevin Mooney coming back on the special cargo. What a heart this horse must have. Special cargo is a great favorite of the Queen Mother's. He's won 12 races altogether. And he's got the worst looking legs in the world. But he still seems to go, keep going. He's coming. 
in looking very well, much better than he looked last year. And we're only walking him at the moment. Um, we're going to give him a month's walking. And in about 10 days, he's, um, we're going to start trotting him. And um, at the moment, he seems absolutely fine. He's done, what, a month's road work? Yes. Yeah, month, so I, I would have thought, a month trotting. not, you know, um, fairly soon he'd be able to go back to yep. Mr. Warren and um, yeah. see, you know, see how he goes from there. Mr. Oswald looks after the horses and um, keeps an eye, which is wonderful. Mr. Warren will be able to tell if the horse is really 100%, really sparking. Yes. In which case, he'll go on for a race. If he's not, or he's not himself in any way at all, well, then he'll just be retired. Yes. When I feed him first thing in the mm. morning, going around with the feed bowl, he kicks and jumps and mm. rushes round, and he, he wouldn't do that if he wasn't feeling right. Now, is he, is he getting that goat's milk? He's having a pint of goat's milk every day. I go and collect it fresh, and um, he loves it. Matilda! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! It's a good girl. When a special cargo comes into really hard training and his diet is increased, he gets a skin trouble. It's a sort of eczema, and, and the goat's milk seems to put it right. Here you are, Mary. Lovely. Thank you very much. That's super. Of course, he's what you call getting on a bit, which is what happens, I'm afraid. But well, they just have to see, see how their legs work, you know. But he's been great, really. Something bred into him. He's such a nice horse, this. Sun rising. He's young. She's had very little experience. He's had one run this year. But he's my sunny boy, which I hope I had, you know. And uh, so we hope he's going to be all right. Oh, well, it would be nice to see him again. Wouldn't it? Jolly well. Very, very good, very good. I think you're in a very good race. 
Uh, it is second time, actually, isn't it? Well, yes. Yeah. Mm. You might get that shot in a minute. Please, sir. We told him that. Uh, we told him. We told him. <laughs> you told him about that. We told him. That's what we want him. Yeah, it's growing a bit more today. It seems to be growing more today. It's pretty, pretty, pretty sticky, too. It is very it? sticky. Yeah. The frost coming out makes it that way. So I it sticks know. It's growing more today. It's pretty really camping. Well, I know. If it went all galloping, it turned into a bit of sprint. There. There I know. I know. It turned into a sprint. It did a lot of that, yes. And the other horse just turned into a sprint. I wanted another six or seven strides. You could have won. I think so. Well, I have a horse, yes. Hello. He is, isn't he? All space is beginning to show a bit of life now, out here. Yes, thank goodness. After all this long, long time. They won't let me see him because he gets excited when I go. Oh, does he? He's barred until he runs. No, how very funny. He doesn't long in to get going, I suppose. Well, I hope we manage to get a run into it somehow. No, no, no. He looks a lot better with his pet. I should think he would. He runs next week or so, I think. Yeah, Probably why they haven't been clipped. <laughs> I've done a lot of entries this week. Well, it's a good entry sheet. Sandown is a very good card, you know. Yes. I hope you could have one for the Queen Mother there, because she likes Sandown. Because, yeah. There's a long way to the three miles. It's a suitable five. course. I ring with the Queen Mother about plans when we've got some runners. And she talks about it and we. No, come to some final decision. She likes to see her horses run if she can. One or two of the Queen Mothers ought to go in there. They're good. Uh, racing on Saturday is definitely on, and Queen Elizabeth will arrive at midday, and the party will consist of Martin and Michael and Angela Oswald, and if they could be booked in for lunch, please. Saturday morning, the first thing we do, I would do is check the horse, check his shoes, plates, his racing plates. Then I, depending what time I'm racing, I'd be up in my tight room, packing. I pack all the colours and take them racing, and uh, and bring them back. My wife washes and prepares them for the next the next day out. For well, now the racing news in both today's national hunt meetings at Nottingham and Windsor have survived early morning in... Well, steeplechasing to me means it's excitement and the thrill of jumping fences at speed. Everything right, Simon? When you're looking at the race, you have to know the other horse's form, let alone your horse's form. So it's very wise to study the form of the other horses. I flick through the sport and life and weigh the race up. Once you're at the races, it's just a matter of getting on with the job in hand. I break into a cold sweat occasionally, because I know I've left out a roller. Or something and then the first thing you do pull up get out check your tack <laughs> ring back ring mr warren every time i was going racing i used to meet an old lady who lived in lambourne and um, i used to think she was bad luck things used to go wrong so in the end i'd make a point of driving around lambourne the opposite way not to find her when we first heard the queen mother was sending her horses to us uh, when Major Catlett uh, died, it was uh, well, a great honour. When you put on the blue and buff colours, it's a sense of pride. I would say that every jockey riding would love to ride for the Queen Mother. I'm lucky that I'm one of the few who have ridden for her and to be associated with such good horses. Oh, well, I always call her Reed's Sporting Life. 
get my day-to-day -day news. And little gossip. It was always great fun. Oh, it's one likes to keep in touch. It's a very handy place for breaking in young ones. And, and plenty of and, room, too. And plenty of room and, and nice mm. and quiet. Exactly. Uh, and then they and they can start doing a little bit of jumping over poles. That's the way it starts, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Before getting yeah. the bigger things. Eldred Wilson, oh, he's, he's splendid. For years he's looked after one or two of the young horses, an occasional broken down one. And they do very well. Yes. Uh, he's, he's great character. I think he has a touch of Irish. Yes. You need a lot of patience mm, then, for this game, don't you? Yeah. Mm, like that. We don't want we don't want any kicking. Well I know, but patience is the word, isn't it, yes, for these young yes, ones, probably. really. Mm. Well I think they're looking very well. It's, it's, it's a long job breeding National Hunt. It's very long term. It takes a long time. But, but it's worth it, you know. It's going to make a great difference now that so many more villas are running. It'll help the future. I mean, you know, somebody who's won a race actually to breed from, which it used to be rare, wasn't it, in the National Hunt? It's all going on. Dogs as well. Dogs are marvellous. Oh dear, it's always happy. Thank you very much. I think we're going to take a picture. Bus yes, Bastino. Yes. And hopefully Jolly Oh, that'd be rather fun, wouldn't it? It'd be nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is the idea to go down? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> this way? No, it's straight ahead, ma'am. Oh. Then we're going to go round the park. I thought. Very <laughs> <laughs> friendly. What I think he's been looking forward to is uh, the carrots. Oh, the carrots. Mm. That's good. good afternoon. Yeah. Now. He caught a glimpse of them early, yeah, and he, so he knew the carrots were here. So. He's, he's looking. He's looking well. Yes. Well, he's, isn't he? he's loving the snow. Yes. He, Does he have a roll? He has a roll, and he, he just loves the snow. He's yeah. such a lovely horse, isn't he? Mm. What do you think of oh. Oh. A lovely roll in the snow, I suppose it's just what yeah. does them good, doesn't it, really? You know, <laughs> it's where it's coming from, too. <laughs> there are, in fact, three more. relatively small stud farms yeah, belonging to the Queen. Them. Sandringham, um, Wolferton, and Polhampton. Uh, Sandringham and Wolferton each house one top-class stallion. Shirley Heights here and Bastino at Wolferton. And they also serve as the home base for the Queen's mares and foals and for Queen Elizabeth Queen Mother's mares and foals. <laughs> if you breed a winner, there's far more excitement and thrill about doing that than if you simply buy the horse. Bastino was a very good racehorse. Without any doubt, the best of his generation. He won the St. Ledger. He should have won the Derby, really. He had a, a, won a rather unsatisfactory race and finished fourth in the Derby. But he did beat Snow Knight, who won the Derby, on every other occasion they met. <laughs> Shirley Heights won the Derby in 1978. And he was a very good horse, a very tough horse, lazy horse. But he always stuck his neck out 
in a finish. And I think uh, he won three of his last four victories in photo finishes, including the Derby and the Irish Derby. He didn't retire to stud, looked on as the most glamorous Derby winner of recent years, but he certainly proved to be a phenomenally successful stud. So is Bastino. They both produce an awful lot of winners, and their offspring have each won over one and a half million pounds. We also use Raynham for horses resting from national hunt racing, walking wounded, horses that have had things done to their legs, and also what we would call the stores, that is two-year-olds and three-year-olds, four-year-olds, waiting to go into training for jump racing. It's very important for steeplechasers that have been racing all through the winter that they should be able to be turned out in the spring, enjoy the spring grass, let down, relax, uh, and really enjoy themselves and, ha and have just a period of holiday. Raynham's marvellous for, for the young horses and for the invalids. You know, the legs go there, and uh, they're marvellously looked after. It's lovely and quiet, and beautiful paddocks. They get every attention, and the legs seem to do very well. <laughs> Recovery comes, which is great. Mm -hmm. Special Cargo, he's, he's a great favourite. He's had some appalling leg trouble and ended with a major operation which involved a carbon fiber implant into the tendons of both his forelegs. And so far that seems to have worked. He's a quite remarkable horse and a brilliant horse at Sandown. He loves that long hill. I think he's only been beaten twice at Sandown out of uh, eight or nine starts. And it's Special Cargo clear of Bert Oak in second place. And Special Cargo comes up to the post, well clear of Bert Oak and Manton Castle. And up the line, Special Cargo is going to win it. Special Cargo is the winner. Bert Oak second. Special Cargo, is a, he's a great steeplechaser. One of the easiest rides you could ever wish for, especially around this course. Uh, he knows the course better than most amateur jockeys, certainly I do. He always put his best effort round the front side just before he gets to the stands. He's a bit of a, I think he's a bit of a prima donna in a way. And the famous Sandown Hill after the last, he always seems to run up that hill better than any other horse I know. And Gerald Oxley now getting a challenge out of Special Cargo. Bird Oak can find no more. A Special Cargo responds to pressure. And Special Cargo goes to the front. And Special Cargo is going to get there. At the line, Special Cargo wins it. Bird Oak is second. Another very thrilling race was in 1986 meeting. Gerald Oxley had a broken leather, I think four fences out, rode the last three fences with his feet out of the irons and with this marvellous old horse knowing exactly where the winning post is, just got up to beat Major Eldred Wilson's Pridal in another very thrilling finish. Race down towards the final fence. It's Pridal by some two to three lengths. The special cargo in second place. And at the last, Pridal jumps it boldly and well. So do the special cargo. And now can he finish up the hill? Special cargo going in pursuit. But Pridal, who's already holding on. But special cargo is ready. Special cargo is to get his dead down. Pridal just having it up towards the line. And special cargo gets there in a photo for me. Poor old horse, he really has been in the wars. But now, touch wood, he's as good as ever. And he may or may not run in the 1987 Grand Military. Bit of top, please. Bit of top, Dave. You've got a tie, have you? Yeah. Borrow one, Vivian. No, don't wear a tie, yeah. She won't notice because she makes a fuss of you. Put my coat over the top, then she will If you could beat, she won't say anything to you. That's all right. 
Desert Orchid after the first two, going on now by two or three lengths. Desert Orchid followed by Very Promising, jumping in second place, then the Argonaut and Ocrabora. So Desert Orchid being well held in the early part of the race by Very Promising, though from this very much informed stable of David Nicholson's in second, and right behind is the Argonaut, whose owner, the Queen Mother, is here this afternoon at the now rain-lashed Sandown Park to watch this fellow run, and still just last to the quartet is Ocrabora. Now they're making their way towards the pond fence for the first time. Desert Orchid the Grey making it still, followed by a very promising. Then in the buff and light blue stripes black cap of the Argonaut in third and finally Ocrabora. Now to the first of the open ditches. Fence number six of the 17. Desert Orchid stood right back, jumped it well. In second place, very promising. Then the Queen Mothers, the Argonaut Stuart Shilson third and finally comes Eamon Murphy on Ocrabora. So these three principals still led by Desert Orchid who's yet to be headed He's made all so far. Now they're running towards the final three fences in this Holston Export Lager Handicap Chase. Desert Orchid the Grey still out in front. They jumped this one well. Half a length down they were to Desert Orchid. The Argonaut still well there in contention in third. Now the pressure's going to be on as they race round the home turn and come to the second from home. Just two to go here at Sandown. Desert Orchid the Grey is going to come. Jump at first. He does from very promising. Now the Argonaut's being produced for his effort. He'll be challenging over on the inside of Desert Orchid. The chairs go up from the stands. This is going to be another nail biting finish. Desert Orchid being pressed now by the Argonaut. The Desert Orchid over first. The Argonaut second. Very promising. He's not going to win this one. He's back in third. And the Argonaut coming with a great run, but he's not going to catch Desert Orchid. Desert Orchid is going to reappear with a win once more, like he did two seasons ago. Up to line and up the post is Desert Orchid the winner. In great style, airs prick. The Argonaut is second. Very promising third. And Ocrabora has just jumped the last fence now. He'll come home to take fourth place prize money. The Argonaut, he's a New Zealander and uh, he settled down very well, seemed to be doing all right. <clears throat> he's just met one better than him this year, <laughs> once or twice. So that's how it goes, isn't it, really? Great. 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 Captain Charles Radcliffe is one of these remarkable people who right, sort on. of backroom boy at National Hunt Racing. He breaks horses in and he sorts their problems out. And uh, I believe last winter or the winter before, there were over 90 wins in National Hunt Racing, which were by horses that had been through his hands. 
He was a great solver of problems and a great teacher of, of young horses. Oh, man. Oh, fella. I mean, this horse always used to be very clumsy as a foal and a yearling. Was he? Oh, yeah. terribly clumsy. I mean, you get his legs in a tangle, isn't it, if he possibly could. Pretty good going. He is. He, he, is. he right. I mean, he's, he's improving all the time. He's a bit weak behind the saddle still. Yeah, he is. But I mean, th that'll, that'll take a while. But he's getting stronger and stronger. Yes. I think you're right. I think you're right. We have Queen Elizabeth horses at two and three years old. Break them in, and then they probably go back to Sandringham, and then they probably come back here again later. We teach them to jump before ever they go on to foot wall. Whoa, the girl, whoa, the lady. Where's a good girl? What's it all about then? Are these the lights on? Yes, they are. The Argonaut. The little Argonaut. He had clipped today. He's come out well, hasn't he? Very well. He's very smart. What sort of going does he like, then? Soft? No. Good, good, good. So he could... Is he ready? Yes, yeah, pretty well, but he's not, not on this track. Everything all right tonight? How were they? Yes, they're all all right. Uh -huh. No, uh, no, nothing wrong at all. Oh, good. That is a relief, I must yes. say. Yes. <laughs> How did the Argonaut look? He didn't show it much. Oh, good. good and um, what about special, special cargo? Special is fine. Is he cutting country yet? We're going to start tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, yes. good. Yes, because he's been on the roads. Um, he's been on the roads. A lot there with Mary. And, um, yeah. Because we might try and get a run into him before Sunday this year. Well, I know. We I say that every year, but we never get round to it. Paul. It'll be much easier for him, won't it, if we can get it? Would, him. If I we could get a race, pre race for him. He's very gay, though, boy, isn't he? Stop it. Just mind yourself, mate. Yeah. Thank you. He's run a new breed, an extreme mile chase, and ran extremely well. And I think the old horse is in very good form. This is a bit harder to go cup than it probably ever been. But I think this old horse is just as good as he was the last year, or a bit better. So I'm, I'm fairly confident. Yes, exactly. Hope mm. he remembers the hill. I do hope so. <laughs> Best of luck. Very important. Well, of course, he is 14 years old, and no horse has ever won the Grand Military Gold Cup four times. And he's got some pretty formidable rivals. Burnt Oak, trained by David Nicholson, who also trains Princess Anne's horse. I mean, I should be thrilled if he gets in the first three. And they're off, and this horse now. Grand Military Gold Cup, and they've got 22 fences to jump. And Burnt Oak on the outside, a special cargo disputed as they come down to the first fence. And Burnt Oak led there, knocked the Quillier up on the very wide outside. They're all safely over the first. And so it's Burnt Oak in the lead from in second place, Whiteford. Then making ground into third is White Paper. At the rear of the field, Treasurer's Rag made a slight mistake. And Burnt Oak leads from in second place, White Paper. Then Whiteford up there. Including third, Dr. Fulia 
jumping mid division at this stage and also made a mistake there was Morty Nice. This is the open ditch and it's Burnt Oak in the lead from Wiper in second place, White Faith in third, Turn Blue four, Knockhill five, Mary Venture in six, Dargoy seven, then special cargo making ground on the inside of Loch Naquilia. But the Bleeping Mother's horse has passed Princess Anne's own horse, Loch Naquilia, who's now tiring, and so they swing right-handed and out into the country for the final time. And it's Burnt Oak in the lead. Burnt Oak shows the way. From Wiper in second, Mary Venture is in third, Turn Blue four, White Paper five, Dark Eye six, Knockhill Racing seven, and Special Cargo starts to make ground now in the light blue and buff jacket, starting to make ground as it normally does goes through into fourth place. They come down towards the pond fence and Burnt Oak out in the lead from Special Cargo now comes through into second place and Special Cargo still continues to make ground. Knock the bullion for Princess and is continuing but it's tailed off, they've got two to jump and it's Burnt Oak in the lead, Burnt Oak clear. A frog in second place, Mary Venture and then Knock Hill. Special Cargo now back in fourth place with oh so much to do and they come down towards the final fence. It's Burnt Oak just as well. Burnt Oak is over safely clear at the post. Burnt Oak is going to win it. Burnt Oak well clear from Mary Venture in second. Knock Hill third. Special Cargo a gallant four finishing five is white paper. He won the race in 84, 85 and 86. And now he's an old horse 14. It was a really first-class effort. I mean, they, they went a terrific gallop, some really good horses in the race. He jumped beautifully and finished like a train. Almost got, just beaten out of third place on the nod. Almost got it. Well done. Well done. He'll uh, go into retirement now, and a long, happy, and well-deserved retirement. Well done. Oh, he ran a good race. Yeah. Okay, girls. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm Queen sorry. I'm Brigadier Roscoe Harvey. For her, racing should be fun. And she does help to make it fun for a great many other people. Somebody once described her as one of life's enhancers. And she certainly does enhance racing to a great considerable degree. I'm so glad. Great strength. I made them myself. <laughs> it's a great gathering. All the people who'd ridden the horse for me. It was great fun. They all looked very well and survived, which is a great thing. It was lovely to see them again, it really was. And so, of course, going quite a long way back to quite old days. They were probably looking just exactly the same. Just the same, same. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> feel about the same. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on Oh, thank you, ma'am. Yes, bonus cross has been very exciting. Yes, yes. Keep our fingers crossed for him. He seems in good form. He's in good form. Yes, yes, he might go to Kempton on Boxing Day, I hope. Yes. Well, that would be very exciting. It's always an exciting race, though. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yes. Yes. They're, they're here, ma'am. Yes. They are. Yes, yeah. they're all right. <laughs> 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 they're all right. Nice to see you again. Yeah, it really is. It's all fair on days. Yes, I know. You're here as well. I know. It was great, weren't they? Lots of old really fun. Yes, they were. They were all right. Sin Charon and Black Magic. Yes, good, I know. So all was. the names were well, yeah. lovely times. Lovely times. Lovely to see you. And you, ma'am. Are you well? Uh, yes, thank you. Very How's your leg? Absolutely cured. Is yes, it's good. good. Couldn't be better. I haven't got a pin for you. <laughs> no, no, not, not yet. <laughs> They're hanging on. <laughs> no, that's very good. Yes. Lovely, you could be here. Yeah. I know, isn't it lovely? I know. Yeah. I know, yes. I know. It came Goodness. from Ireland. I often think of that day, but it was great fun. It was, mm. and every time I go to Down Patrick, I'm reminded of it. So. I often think of it, that it's, it was it's all the extraordinary yes. things that happened to yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, A lot of people thought that um, you hadn't won. You I see. know. Was it close, was it? Yes. Was it, uh, it was a loose horse. Was, yeah. It is a real sporting 
thing still, isn't it, National Hunt? I was thinking the other day, it must be about 80% disappointment. Or more, perhaps. But there, that makes up, doesn't it, when you do get a winner? I think it's well worth it. Oh, it's great sport, isn't it?